Hello and welcome to a new video about digital technology. We are talking about counters. Last time we talked about up and down counters and today we are going to talk about a PCD counter. So we said, okay, if we want to, to connect those counters directly to some sort of display, it would be nice that it counted in decimal. All right? So let's have a look how this is working. Let's start with the, with the up counter. Huh? So the up counter looked like that. We had a chain of four flip-flops. All right. There we always had this toggle input. We always had the queue. And then we had this connection to the next toggle input. Here we had queue and not queue. This is how this is working. This was working. Okay, this was the counter. There's a separate video about this, you can watch it. Here we had the counter input, see? And this already started to count. And then we had, as we said, we have S and R inputs, which are static and overrule the T input. So if the R input is here, we will directly uh, set to zero, regardless of what is what is coming. And this was the reset line. And the reset line is switching, as long as the signal is here, is switching this counter to zero. Yeah? So this was, this was Q0, this was Q1, this was Q2, and this was Q3. This is exactly how this looked like. Okay. Now, this thing counted from 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1. Yeah? However, what is 9? Nine? 9 should be the last digit. 9 is 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay? So it's 8, this is the value 8, this is value 4, 2, 1. 8 and 1. Those two must be here and those two must not be here. So. What we do is simply we add here an end block, bigger end block, and make this. So we say this must be one, this must not be one, this must not be one, and this must be one. All right, and then we make an additional dynamic input. This coming from C. What is happening now? If we have this combination, so if it's nine and we have a rising edge, we have a rising edge. Here we have a short signal. Here we have a short signal. Okay, so this is already our overflow signal. Okay, to the next. To the next digit. This goes to the next digit, the C input of the next digit. And what else must happen? I also have to add here an additional element, an OR. One side comes from R, eh? and the other side I will simply connect here. To this end. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. This will reset at exactly the correct time when we had nine. We'll reset my count to the zero and give the signal to the next to the next uh, digit. Yeah. So those things here, everything I'm marking now in green, this is purely 
for PCT. So this is the PCT extension to our asynchronous upwards counter. Everything else is the same. Eh? This is the, the PCT part, or we'll call it PCT extension. And now we can connect this directly to a seven segment display or whatever, and the seven segment display will count in decimal numbers from zero to nine, and then already next number, and so on. All right, and now let's have a look how this is working with a downwards counter. So the downwards counter look also quite the same way. So we have those four flip-flops. It's not a bad thing that we repeat this. Huh? You have the toggle inputs. We have Q and not Q. We have our digits. It's again Q0, it's again Q1, it's again Q2, it's again Q3. All right. So, what else do we need? We need the connection to the next one. We have again our S and R's. We have again our C input, our counter input. This time we're counting downwards. Yeah, and what shall happen actually? What shall happen? We need also, we need also an end, so we are comparing, there's an end, now the extension. And we have the same, the same situation. Not exactly, not exactly, because if we are counting down and we're reaching zero, we're going to one, 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 one. But we want to go to one, zero, zero, one. Yeah. So in case we are at one, 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 and one, we need to do the following. We need to set this. So I will bring this back here. This needs to be set. All right. This needs also to be set. And those two need to be reset. So I have to add here to OR. To OR elements. This is going to be reset here. And one side of this OR element will be filled from here. Okay, and the other side, of course, is still our R line. This R line is also here. We need to reset the counter somehow. This is how this is working. So whenever we're reaching one 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 one, we will immediately set it to one zero zero one. Yeah, by the use of those of those uh, static inputs. So in this case, we have those parts as PCT extension. 
here and if everything is one so we count it from zero one down we will set this thing to one zero zero one so to nine okay. here is also the overflow to the next digit okay. so this is upwards counter maybe I should note it up counter and this here is the down counter This is how PCD counters work, all right? Asynchronous, still asynchronous. And this is exactly our next topic. Yeah? We will analyze what is happening in asynchronous counters if we're getting too fast. Is there a thing like being too fast? Yes, there is. Yeah? And yeah, well, we will see. Yeah, we will analyze this in the next video see the timing and so on, compare the ideal world to the real world, and then we realize, we oh, yeah. yeah. I'll show you next video. For this time, thank you very much for living, uh, for listening, <laughs> living. Thank you very much for living and listening. <laughs> Goodbye.